New York is a city of extremes. One site is really well known. The economically vibrant Manhattan. Hipsters, coffee cups on the street, people calling, taxis and Times Square. But on the other side you have parts where the nearest piece of fresh fruit is a 30 minute walk away. Where it's dangerous because of shootings, poverty and crime. This is one of the poorest neighborhoods in the US. This is the Bronx. They were expecting to hear from the NYPD once again. Station on the search for a suspect in a stray bullet shooting in the Bronx. It was like scary outside in the streets because of all the shootings that go on. 61 year old grandmother who was gunned down. Now last week a 12 year old Cade Lewin, he was left dead when he was shot. When 11 year old Kiara Tay was fatally shot. Before five o'clock we're chasing a 13 year old boy along the sidewalk on Fox Street shooting at him. It's like fun but at the same time scary because, because there's like a lot of criminals and like a lot of like fights and shooting. So Whenever I would come to school, it would be like a sanctuary for me, outside of the streets. And when I come in this room, it makes me forget about all of that. In this dark part of town, 20 years ago, Stephen Ritz started the project. He wanted to teach children about growing, selling and cooking healthy food. Offer them a green perspective in their dark environment. This is the most marginalized community in the world. Well, this is an opportunity to grow healthy schools, grow healthy children, transform palates, but most importantly, transform mindsets and outcomes. For far too long, the Bronx has been first in everything bad and, and last in everything good. And this is an opportunity to grow something greater, transform minds, and give children the opportunity they need not to survive, but to thrive in line with Mother Nature. Green Bronx Machine is the art and science of growing vegetables aligned to every single subject area. We are a whole school program that generates high performing schools, happy, healthy children, and changes the social determinants of health. Basically what we do is we teach the math, the science, and the literacy, and we do it around growing. And at the end of the day, really what we're doing is growing citizens. Um, so our children are, are everything to us. And it's about providing them an education, and education should be fun. So we really have a lot of fun in this classroom. I'm not gonna say that this is the easiest neighborhood to live in. You know, it's very dense. And in the summer, it's hot. And there's a lot of vehicles and a lot of traffic. And so when you come into a classroom like this one, it feels like all of that melts away. And you get to just enjoy seeing something grow and taking awe in the little joys of nature that you have here in a room. And you have people who are equally excited to be here and do cool things. Why I like being in the Green Bronx Machine Room? Because we get to learn stuff and Mr. Ritz inspires us. So, for an example, say if I wanted to be a farmer when I grow up. I can plant. This is exciting. You ready? <laughs> what is your name and your role? Eric, Eric Adams, mayor of the city of New York. If you go to a community where you see high levels of asthma, high level of diabetes, chronic diseases, you also see high levels of fast, overprocessed, fried, sugar added food. And so there's a correlation between these health problems we're having and the lack of access to healthy food, we must ensure access to that healthy food. And not only just sit on the shelf, showing people how to prepare that food that's culturally sensitive in a real way. The message there that it's that, it's that, that every kid just needs an opportunity, that every kid just needs to have the, like, somebody who believes in them and that there are, even in the, in the poorest and most vulnerable communities, that there are still there's still resources right there there's still resources right there and that if you take the right approach in a classroom if you bring the resources then you can have a successful you can have a successful class you can have a successful kid you can have a successful neighborhood so the the the, the lesson is that this is not uh, great successes are not just about rich communities it can happen everywhere. It just we just need we need the resources and we need the people and we need the ideas. 
I like to say that there's a Bronx everywhere. There's a Bronx in Europe, there's a Bronx, you know, in South America. There, there are places like our neighborhood everywhere in the world. We happen to be focused here. To expand his reach, Ritz started a non-profit franchise format, sharing the philosophy and the working method of the Green Bronx Machine with anyone who wants to hear or taste it. Today, 50,000 students in 500 schools spread over 15 countries using this method. What's next? What's really next is to put one foot in front of the other. Work like this is hard and it requires courage. And the opposite of courage is not cowardice. The opposite of courage is conformity because even a dead fish can go with the flow. So we're gonna keep swimming because we're not dead fish. We're not gonna go with the flow and we're going to be disruptive and innovative and believe that our little humble corner from this simple classroom, we can change the world. In this classroom, we are not seeking the light at the end of the tunnel. We are the light within our tunnel. We are glowing and shining and becoming a beacon to the world. And this classroom stays lit. The hat I'm wearing is called the cheese hat. And basically, it reminds me of Mr. Ritz because he always has a cheese hat on. Uh, the story of the cheese hat, Mr. Ritz loves likes cheese. The first time I saw it, I was like, what the hell is this dude doing? Physically, as the man with the cheese hat, he doesn't go anywhere without that cheese hat. And it has become our way of engaging the students. They all love the cheese hat. It's it, the connection that exists there for people. It's like, it's a, it's a great thing. And when they see that coming down the hall, when a student is wearing it, the student is wearing it because they have a connection to the work that's attached to it, so. This cheese hat is symbolic of the fight, and I fight. I fight for children who are born in places that most people would not want to be caught dead in. This cheese hat is symbolic of the fight for children whose monsters are real, who don't have someone always to have a shoulder to lean on. So this, this, this hat is symbolic of kids who don't always get dinner and don't always know what dessert is, who don't have a bedroom to call their own, uh, who may never see a dentist. So this hat is symbolic of something so much bigger than the stupid foam it represents. This cheese hat is about hope, it's about opportunity, and that simple kind acts and compassion, and one kind caring adult can change the world again and again and again.